So the first question, which this particular one is, it's not quite common, but it's common in a way. The first one is, do downloaded videos count as watch hours for the content creator? For example, I know you get to see the download button there on the YouTube uh, application or platform where and then some people if they are in a hurry, they don't get to watch or stream your video or your content directly from YouTube. What they do is you just get to download it to watch it in a later time. So does this hurt your watch hours? Does this hurt your engagement? Does this hurt your your growth in any way? So let me tell you, it could be no, it could be yes, it's kind of mixed. Okay, let's look at it, let's look at it this way. We have watch time, what they call watch time, watch hours, and then we have what they call engagement. Okay, so if someone downloads your video, yes, your engagement is still increasing because the person picked interest in your content and decided to download the video. YouTube has taken note of that. For the person to have downloaded your content, YouTube has taken note of that. But on the other hand, this was not streamed on the platform. Therefore, it's not counted as watch hours. It's not counted as watch hours because it was not streamed on the platform. Okay, so if someone gets to download your video, sorry, as it's kind of bad luck because the person will add to your engagement. People are engaging with your videos. Perhaps your thumbnail, your thumbnail is quite catchy for the person to have seen it. But the person was not engaging. YouTube likes when people get to engage with the platform, always on the platform, watching videos, doing this and that. They get to see the ads. If you get to download videos from YouTube, the ads do not play, right? The ads do not play. You don't get to see the ads and all. You just get to download. So that is not counted as part of the watch ads. Now, this second one, the second question is kind of tricky. What if someone watches my video in 2x like the playback speed is 2x and or 0.5 we know the usual is 1x that's the usual playback speed what if my subscribers or not even my subscribers what if people get to watch my videos in 2x or 0.5x what does it do to my watch hour? does it increase it or does it reduce it okay that's a very good question i know most of you have been looking for answers to this particular question i personally did that's why i had to make lots of research if someone gets to watch your videos in 2x what it does is that it's actually counted like if for example let me just make a plain example for example if your video is 10 minutes and someone watches it to in 2x which means the person has watched it two times in normal time faster than normal time so it means the person watched your video for five minutes which means the person's time engagement time was just five minutes so it is counted for you as five minutes not 10 minutes so the person watched your video was able to complete the video in five minutes the person was on youtube platform on your video for five minutes and that was all so how about if the person watches it in 0.5 now this is the tricky part if the person watches it anything less than the usual 1x speed it still counts as normal 1x i don't know why it's it i don't know why it's being calculated that way so even if you watch the video as slow as 0 0.0 less than 0 0.5 which i'm not sure okay 0 0.25 or whatever however slow you decide to watch the video it still counts as a normal 1x speed but once you watch it higher than the 1x speed if you watch 2x and all it still less it makes the time lesser it makes the time lesser so we're supposed to get 10 minutes for the work time for a person you are going to get five if the person watches it in 2x so i know most people get to watch youtube videos in 2x if you are part of them just signify in the comment section below i know most people still do that so that is it basically if, if you are watching your video in 2x the person reduces your work time from the usual 10 minutes that the person is supposed to spend to a lesser time which is half of the time which is five minutes so that's all for that question if you have anything relating to this always do comment below and then we'll get back to you on that so before we go to the third one if you are new to this channel please and please give this video a thumbs up if you are enjoying what you've heard so far and also please subscribe subscribe to this channel i said we talk on online safety digital safety and exposed data scams and tricks used in nigeria and all over the world so please we teach online safety just subscribe and then sometimes with time we get to answer some questions in relation to youtube okay due to the research made okay so please and please subscribe to this channel moving on to the third question without wasting time which is more important title or thumbnail i know we get to ask these questions a lot and then we get some answers that even get to confuse us some will say both of them are quite important and you have to use both of them side by side and all hmm really really 
Well, let me tell you what I got to discover. Let me just put it this way plainly so that you understand it. The title is not for you. The title is for YouTube. The thumbnail is for you. Do you get me? Let me explain you. Let me explain what I mean. You put in a very interesting title, perhaps capitalizing your titles. So many designs of titles. Some people capitalize the first letter of each word they are putting on their title. Some people get to put it in brackets. Some people get to so many ways. Some people get to highlight the particular keywords they want in capital letters. Very good. Some people get to choke the keywords first of all in their titles. All those are good practices. But the title is just majorly for YouTube to put it out. For example, if someone searches for something, it is your title Google uses and then your description. So Google puts out your title. Oh, this matches what the person is searching for because the person types basically. The person does not show, show an image. The person types what he wants. So Google picks those keywords, checks for the titles it has in its database and puts those videos forward. So good. That is what that is what a good title does for you. It enables YouTube to push your your content forward for people to see. Okay, it pushes your content forward for people to see. But now, what about your thumbnail? How effective is that? The only usefulness of your thumbnail, like I said, is for you. When Google pushes those good titles forward, the only thing that makes people to get to watch your content is if the thumbnail is good enough. If they get attracted by the thumbnail, perhaps the thumbnail looks really good or it looks clickbaity, though not clickbaity in a negative sense, but it looks like, yes, this is what I want to see. They get to open your video. Okay, they get to open that content, they get to view that content because of your thumbnail. So, the thumbnail is for you. If you are designing your thumbnail well and you do it well, it's because you know it, this is what will make people to click on my video. But Google does not put out the videos mainly because of the thumbnail. They put out the videos because of the title. It set the queries that people have typed is in relation to your own title. So, Google puts out for the title. People select you because of your thumbnail. People most times people don't even get to read the titles. Once they see the thumbnail, oh, I searched for this thing and YouTube brought out this result for me. Oh, I've seen this thumbnail, it looks attractive, it looks like something that I might want to enjoy. They click on it and that is it. It's if they don't, if they are not satisfied with that, then what they do is they move to the next thumbnail that attracts them, not even the title, because for as far as they are concerned, YouTube has brought the the options, the, the search queries that will fit what they are searching for. So what we drag them to, or what we lure them to watching the videos is the thumbnails. So I hope you understand now. The thumbnails is for you. The titles is for YouTube. YouTube gets to push your titles. You get to market yourself with your thumbnails. So thumbnails are more important to me, okay? Your thumbnails are more important to you as a person. But for Google, the titles are more important. So that's why in the end you have to work and you have to make both of them very good because if your thumbnails are excellent and your titles are not excellent, Google won't push your article forward. And good, if your titles are good enough and your thumbnails are not good enough, when someone gets to see the search queries, they'll perhaps skip your thumbnail. You'll go for the one that is more attractive to them. Okay, so that's basically all about that. So hope by now you should know why people keep saying the both are important. Question 4 that is usually asked. How do I get lots of comments on my channel? How do I detect those ones that are bots? Because it's obvious now, um, I think this whole bot issue started from 2018, it grew in 2019 and it worsened in 2020 where you get bots commenting on your comment section. You get to see some comments and all. Some people do not detect its bots immediately and then they get to respond to these comments and then some bots get to spam their comments. So, but how do you detect the bot and what do you do? One, the way to detect the bot is that the comment is usually off like off points of what was in the video it's usually not related to the video in question whatever comments the person is given is not in relation to the video that's one number two it's always self-promotional the bot is either saying get to subscribe to this or i have a this i'm referring to this person on instagram or something like that you just get to know it's the bot and then what you do is you handle them immediately by blocking the person block the person because whether you like it or not the person is reducing the growth of your channel you might be seeing that the person as oh this person is a subscriber or or not but please block the person bots do more harm than good to your channel so block the person or restrict the person from commenting at all okay so i hope with this you get to detect who is a bot and who is not a bot okay so finally we are moving to the last the, we are moving to the last 
question that I have to answer. There are lots of unanswered questions, but these ones are the ones I decided to pick out because nobody's really talking about them. Perhaps people are really confused about it, but I'm explaining it the way I understood and the way um, the support team told me and plus the research I've seen online, okay? Would the person watching his own content for multiple times be added to the person's watch hour? For example, I put out a video of perhaps 10 minutes and then I keep on watching this. After the 10 minutes, I rewatch, I rewatch, I keep on rewatching my content. Does it count to my, does it add to my 4,000 watch hours? Hmm. Uh, can you guess the answer? The answer is no. It doesn't count at all. So if you keep on watching your videos for a long time, keep on repeating, repeating, it does not count your watch hours. You still get the same thing. Do you know why? The reason is because each person is um, dedicated to one particular Google account. As long as you're using a particular Google account to watch a particular video, it is recorded that this particular Google account has seen this video once. If it records it as, okay, you completed a 10 minutes video, you, you saw it in five minutes or you watched only five minutes of it or only two minutes of it, it has recorded that you have seen the video, okay? So, if at all, and then that time you used to watch it at the first time, at the first instance, it's what it counts as a part of your watch hours or watch minutes. So, for example, you watch a 10 minutes video, you watch it and stop at, at the third minute mark, and then you close YouTube. Then when you come back to that video again, you know YouTube usually stops at that point where you stop, which is a good thing. When you continue from that point, it adds the remaining 7 minutes. If you complete the video, it adds the remaining 7 minutes to your watch time. But if the person starts again, it's still, and then the person completes it perhaps, it just adds the 7 minutes, it does not add the 3 minutes that has already been watched to your watch time. I hope this is clear. Okay, so, if you keep on watching your videos multiple times, as long as you're using the same Google account, it's going to be recorded as just you watching it once. So that's just the implication. So for those that might feel I need to watch my videos multiple times and all that is going to give me more watch hours, no, that is the wrong thought. That is a very wrong thought. They are not going to, it's not going to be calculated as part of your watch hours. So I hope with this video, most of your questions have been answered. If you have any questions that you feel we require answers do well to put them in the comment section so we'll see you next time please and please if you have not subscribed thank you for staying to the end if you have not subscribed please do well by clicking the subscribe button and also don't forget the notification bell icon as it to notify you the moment we upload so thank you and see you next time